Welcome to another episode of Autogefühl, today with me, AJ. You join me in the beautiful mountains here in Austria, and next to me is a very elegant looking car. This is the third generation Volkswagen Touareg. What's new about this car? How is it different? How is it better? These are the questions you have, and I'm here to find out the answers. So, are you ready? Come on, let's go! The front of the new Touareg is pretty fresh, in line with the new Volkswagen design philosophy. I see bits of the Arteon here, for example, with the way the headlights kind of are included in the design in the grille and it kind of goes lower here and there's a vast horizontal grille design, as well as these uh, intakes on the left and the right kind of remind me of the T-Roc as well. So it kind of brings the SUV family of Volkswagen together very nicely. This is an actual intake for the radiator, or, um, and this one actually is just a blocked cosmetic element. The new Touareg also has a whole host of very cool, very interesting assistance systems, um, much of which you can already see over here, for example, with this two-dimensional logo, because this will have some of the sensors for the radar control. There's also a thermal imaging camera, which gives you night vision, so you can pretend to be James Bond with this car. And these LED lights are also the in, uh, Matrix LED light, which is the optional package. The standard Touareg already comes with um, standard LED lights, but apparently they have 128 single LED lamps in each cluster with the Matrix LED light, and they're intelligent, they have options and, sorry, features such as um, preventing dazzling of oncoming traffic. So, what do you guys think? Do you like this design, or is it a bit too brash for your taste? Let me know. The Touareg rides on Pirelli P0 tires, and in this case is on 20-inch wheels. You get 18-inch wheels as standard, and you can optionally get 19, 20, and even 21-inch wheels. There are three design L uh, packages or trims. Uh, there is the Atmosphere, the Elegance, and the R-Line. The Atmosphere and the Elegance have black cladding on the wheel arches, whereas the R-Line will have the same body color uh, for the wheel arches. It will have a slightly uh, lower a bumper design as well as some side skirts. So it kind of visually brings the weight of the car lower to give it a more sporty stance. But uh, apart from that, the atmosphere and the elegance also get this chrome strip here. And of course, a lot more different uh, uh, um, design elements on the inside, which I will show you later on. By the way, the Touareg is now uh, 4.88 meters long. That's about eight centimeters longer than before. It's two meters wide, and even though it's grown in size, it's actually lost about 100 kilograms of weight, 106 to be exact. So now it's about 1,995 kilograms. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the design line is fairly simple, just one line horizontally running towards the back, but when you get to the back of the rear door, it kind of gets a little bit more emphasized with this shoulder or this rear haunch. Uh, there's a lot of different suspension options as well. You get the standard suspension, or you can get the optional sports suspension, and you can also get what we have in our test car, and I will talk about later on, is the air suspension. Now with the air suspension, you can also get something called as the anti-tilt uh, system, which has the split automated um, anti-roll bar, which I will also talk about later on, so make sure you stick around till the end. And towards the back, well, it's a very long car. You can see that from this angle, but I think it looks really good. The back of the Touareg, I think, has a little bit of a resemblance to its Porsche siblings. This center section on the trunk is a little bit bulbous. It reminds me of the Cayenne or the Macan, but that's not a bad thing. The roof is sloping ever so slightly towards the back. There's also a spoiler at the top. The Touareg logo and uh, name stamped in very bold spaced letters. 
Towards the bottom, we have a blacked out lower section of the bumper and a chrome strip up here. These exhaust tips, well, they're half and half, I would say. The actual exhaust is inside and the outer casing is just cosmetic. But I think it looks pretty good. And what do you think? Here we have the key for the new Volkswagen Touareg. The design of this key fob is also something new. I like it, it's very sleek, but the ventilator is very common amongst the VW Group family. The Škodas and the Seats also have the same uh, buttons for the, the fob for the um, ventilator. Anyway, first of all, I would like to show that this door also has a soft close function, which is pretty cool. And another interesting point is if you notice down here, the, the lower section of the door really encapsulates the bottom of the frame. You know, it kind of covers it up all the way down here. And Volkswagen says that one of the reasons why they chose to do this is that this lower frame of the door will always then remain clean. So I think that's also pretty cool. I like when there's extra attention to detail. So, like I was saying earlier, you have three trims for the design. You have the atmosphere, you have the elegance, and you have the R-line. In the atmosphere, as you can see, you get wood inlays, which I always like. Over here, there's a piano black insert on the top, LED lights down here, some more chrome accents, and a brown plush material over here. All soft materials down here as well. It's only when you come here that there's a little bit more hard plastic. In the elegance trim, by the way, this wooden inlay will be replaced by a brushed um, aluminum effect inlay. And then the R-line, it's all piano black. In Germany, at least, you get basic seats, uh, the entry-level seats, which are just uh, fabric. But uh, these are the ergo seats, the ergo comfort seats, which have seat heating, seat ventilation, they also have seat massaging. It can be really adjusted for everything for lumbar support, side bolstering, under thigh support. They're very comfortable. And also this chocolate brown color, I think accents the interior very nicely. Let's hop inside and take a closer look. This is called the InnoVision cockpit. It has a 12 inch display for the instruments over here. And as you come towards the right hand side, in this case, the optional 15 inch gargantuan touchscreen over here. The base option for this would be a 9.2 inch touchscreen, which then would have a separate button for the climate control and not the touchscreen here. We'll take a look at that later on, but I want to focus your attention to the large virtual dashboard. As with all virtual dashboards, you can have a whole host of different kinds of views, a full screen um, navigation. In this case, it's very Google Earth-like. It looks really nice. It works really well. Of course, you have different options for your audio, telephone, vehicle status. There's also the thermal camera for the night vision system. And it also detects if animals or humans are walking and it will highlight them. And this in conjunction with the matrix LED lights really gives you a great overview in the nighttime. Heads up display, which you can see over here, which gives you some useful information, such as your uh, speed, your uh, navigation instructions, and um, even the speed limit as recognized by the traffic sign. 
Apart from that, there is also a off-road mode, which gives you some uh, information such as your uh, departure angles, driving data. As we saw, we had some pretty good mileage today. And assistance systems is what is the other important feature. There's a hotkey button on the steering wheel, which I can press. There's lane keeping assist. There's also adaptive cruise control or speed limiter. And this is the speed adjustment mode. So like um, you'll see later on in this film, it actually reads the traffic sign. And if the speed limit is changing, the adaptive cruise control or the speed limiter will uh, target that speed. So if it's 80 kilometers per hour speed limit and then changes to 100, the cruise control will also automatically change to 100. Side assist, rear traffic alert, front assist, so a lot of safety features. I could be here for days, so let's um, move over from this now to the main touchscreen. Um, it's very, uh, very responsive, very good resolution. It's pretty much high definition. There's a drawer from the top for your uh, menu. You have uh, App Connect for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and Mirror Link. This is the hotkey button to go home. You can use two fingers to swipe left or right. And within these things, you can use one finger to swipe between these various uh, options. And also touch and hold them to change it to what you want to see. So again, a little bit too complicated maybe for some, but it just goes to show that there's so much you can see and so much of information. Maybe it's an overload, but anyway, you also have the parking camera. Uh, you can also get the upgraded version, which then will have all the cameras, including the cameras on the side and the sensors on the side to render a slightly warped, but a very cool 3D model of the car in its surroundings, which will really help you place the car. This one doesn't have that, but it also has a trailer assist camera and a top-down view uh, as well. So um, that covers this. Down here, we have the seat heating and cooling and uh, various different options, such as the under thigh support. You can control it here. You can control the massage here. Um, of course, heating and see, uh, cooling. And you can sync with the passenger seat. So that system is over here. The, there we go. You can also change the temperature for your air conditioning over here. So I don't really like this. I would still like the buttons for the climate control to be actual buttons and not a uh, touch uh, screen. So the 9.2 system, I think, 9.2 inch screen infotainment system, I think would be the best bet. We have a cubby hole with a inductive charging port, 12 volt power socket, USB charger. Then this is the gear shift for the eight speed automatic transmission, um, start stop, auto hold, and thankfully still a roller with a nice knurled finish for the volume and um, your hazard lights, pretty large cup holders and Two dials, this is for the air suspension. This would be in normal mode. If you do it this way, then the whole car will raise. This will be even more higher, and then vice versa, this would go down. But you can leave it here and sync all of the, the four wheels. Um, on this side, we have another dial for the driving mode. This would be for comfort. This would be for eco. Then this is normal, as you can see. Sport, you can individualize what you would like, off-road mode and snow mode. So just to give you an idea of what kind of options we have, we can go into the individual mode. You can adapt um, up here. You can see the different options for the individual mode. You can even adapt the way the air conditioning works. So if it's really quick and to change the temperature, or if it's more economical, um, light assist, the adaptive cruise control, if it's more gradual in changing the speed or if it's more abrupt, and then the drivetrain, which would be the gearbox, the steering weight, and also the chassis, in this case, would be the air suspension. There's a lot of storage spaces as well. Just look at the size of this armrest. It's really big, wide enough for two people to put their arms on. Really nice cushioning for your elbow. 
Inside you have a felt lined cubby hole, which is not as deep as the cover would expect you to believe, but at least there is a USB charger inside. Apart from that, there is also a pretty decent glove box over here, also felt lined, and it's also damped, and a little pouch on the side to put some more loose items. I do like how this InnoVision cockpit just kind of seamlessly curves from the dials to the infotainment system. Um, of course, you know, even Mercedes has this kind of a full length digital display, but this is a little bit more focused towards the driver. This shape also kind of reminds me of the infotainment dashboard um, for the in the Volkswagen Polo. It's positioned in angle ever so slightly towards the driver. And also the design continues towards this side. It's also very horizontal, kind of reminiscent of the grille on the outside. So overall, from the outside and the inside, it's a very cohesive design language. And one last thing, you can see here that this car has the optional uh, Dyn audio system. It sounds really good. All right, let's take a look in the back seat of the new Touareg. The door opens fairly wide. It doesn't open out completely in a 90 degree, but it's got a nice opening to fit your child seats. They also have a sunshade if you so require. Getting inside is fairly easy, thanks to this high ride height. And I also really like the ambient lighting which the new Touareg has, because there's always kind of like two layers. There's like one perforated strip on the top and another strip on the bottom. And you can also see that all the way through in the front as well. So it really livens up the interior. Apart from that, I have an air conditioning vent on the B pillar, as well as an air conditioning vent here in the center console. Not only that, I actually have two climate zones. So there's a four climb, there are four climate zones in this car. Seat heating as well. And down here, a 12 volt power socket, a couple USB sockets, and a 240 volt power outlet. So you can charge your laptop, your phone, your iPad, all at the same time. The seats are also quite practical. You can adjust the reclining of the back, like so, in either the 60 section or this 40 section. You can also slide these seats front and back if you want to liberate more space in the trunk. There is also a tab to pull down the center armrest, which has some cup holders, which also then doubles as a ski hatch. And lastly, although there is a fairly wide transmission tunnel, since it's not that tall, you can easily clamber on to the side. And the middle seat, thanks to this wider bench and fairly decent space in the footwells, is fairly comfortable for a third adult as well. The new Touareg not only is bigger on the outside, but it's also bigger on the inside. Thanks to clever packaging, there's a lot of interior space, and that also translates to a huge boot. This is 810 liters of space, which is 113 liters more than the previous version. It's also very rectangular, so fitting items is a lot more easier and a lot more systematic. There is no loading lip here, but of course this SUV has a really high body, so it you might feel this to be a problem, but Volkswagen has thought of that as well. Thanks to the air suspension, you can lower the car, like so, by a few centimeters, and then this will help you load your items easier. There are also latches on the side to fold the seats, for example, like this, in a 60-40 fashion. A 12-volt power socket down here, an automatic uh, button to retract the tow bar, like so. There we go. That's also the connector is built in and it automatically retracts as well. Let's see if it can do that for us right now. There we go. Takes a little bit of time. And underneath the floor as well, a lot more space. Of course, you can also get the spare wheel. Let's do a quick security check on the automatic tailgate. Wow, really impressive, very sensitive. So you don't have to be worried about your children getting pinched by the system. It's pretty safe.
Let's take a look under the hood. Pneumatic struts to hold the, uh, the hood open. So, right now the Volkswagen Touareg is only available with this engine that you see here. This is a 3 liter V6 TDI, the diesel engine. This makes 286 horsepower. It's uh, mated to the 8 speed Tiptronic automatic transmission and it has the 4 motion all wheel drive system. Although in this case it's a, a full time all wheel drive, Volkswagen uses the word 4 motion for all of their all wheel drive systems, albeit they have different variations like the Golf has the uh, transverse mounted. Uh, ha Haldex Borgwarner system. But anyway, uh, later on you will also be able to get this engine in a lower state of tune with 231 horsepower. Then there will also be a 4 liter V8 diesel engine. There will also be a 3 liter V6 TSI, the turbo petrol engine, which makes 340 horsepower. And there will also be a 2 liter TSI plug in hybrid, which I think would be a really good solution for having a big SUV, but at the same time being a little bit more sustainable. So here we have the actual component, the anti-roll bar for the adaptive chassis control with the active roll stabilization. So here you can take a detailed look on how the system works. So in a conventional anti-roll bar, this would be one complete shaft. And uh, when the suspension um, on this wheel would go up, it would also initiate a compression on the other side, on the other wheel, corresponding wheel. And that's how the cars try to get some more uh, stabilization around corners. But what this does is it splits the anti-roll bar down the middle. And there's a motor here which can actuate each independent section in opposite directions if needed. And this kind of a anti-roll bar um, uh, active control is on both the axle, the front and the rear. So suppose um, this is the outside wheel and this is the inside wheel when uh, the car is going around a corner. So what would happen then is this would initiate a compression and this would initiate an extension. So that way the outside wheels are kind of getting pushed down and the inside wheels are getting pushed up a little bit. So that makes the car a lot more stable and planted. Not really leaning in, but a very controlled anti-roll active system. Here we have a quick video demo of how the four wheel steering works. So at slow speeds, the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction by about five degrees than the front wheels. So this effectively reduces the turning circle. And this is very useful when you're going around tight city corners or in parking lots, as this video demonstrates. But at the same time, on the highway at higher speeds, the rear wheels actually turn in the same direction by a few degrees again as the front wheels, so the car effectively strafes across lanes, and this is a lot more stable and more comfortable for the passengers as well. So here we have the actual circuit board for the Matrix LED lights. These are the individual lights, and you can see here how there's so many of them. And by the time they go through all of these optical components and this lens, it's really bright and really dispersed. But because of the matrix, um, it can do functions like anti-dazzling for oncoming traffic, as well as cornering lighting. So it's pretty intelligent. It will analyze the driving conditions. And if there's an obstacle in front, it will shine light on that. If you're turning, it will shine lights pretty much at a 90 degree angle into the turn, as well as um, uh, preventing the oncoming traffic from being dazzled. Here we can see a little bit of the demo of the night vision. It works in conjunction with the matrix LED light. There's a thermal imaging camera, which is located right here. And it gives you this really nice view and it highlights if there are pedestrians or animals about to cross the street. It also flashes a warning light at them using the matrix LED lights and keeps shining that light in that region. So it's very safe and very cool. Well, here we are everybody. We're driving the all new third generation Volkswagen Touareg and we're starting off our driving review here in the city streets of Salzburg in Austria. Now, this car might not be uh, built to be a very city friendly car, but thanks to the Touareg now getting the rear axle steering or four wheel steering, 
it effectively reduces the turning circle of the car, especially when you're at slow speeds, and that makes maneuvering the car in these tight city spaces that much more easier. So what happens is, at speeds up to 37 kilometers, about, uh, 37 kilometers per hour, thereabouts, the rear axle turns in the opposite direction as the front axle by about five degrees or up to five degrees. So that means that while the front of the car is turning in the, for example, to the right, the rear of the car turns to the left. So you kind of get this um, rotation and that enables you to maneuver this fairly large car in fairly tight spaces. And this four wheel steering actually at higher speeds, which we can test out once we get on the highway, will also turn in the same direction as the front wheels um, and then in that case effectively increase the turning circle and that will give you a more composed more um, stable cornering around uh, uh, yeah around tight corners at higher speeds another good uh, point of the Touareg for city driving is its seating position of course this is a full-size SUV or at least a European full-size SUV and because of that you have tall windows on the side the windshield in the front is pretty big it's not extremely tall it's more sleek the dashboard is also quite high and this um, my instrument cluster there also is the uh, heads-up display so it's a little bit more bulky than usual but on the whole it's not too bad the wheel out the rear uh, window is also pretty good there's a big um, uh, rear view mirror as well and because of this higher seating position it makes it more easy to place the car in uh, narrow tight situations you can also get the more um, advanced parking assist which gives you a 3d view a 3d render and you can actually kind of see the car in a third person view which is really helpful for those uh, tight parking spaces in, um, in these really small city parking lots. So I think it's fairly easy, it's, uh, it still feels fairly wide, it's about two meters um, wide, so because of that you kind of have to be sure that you're not coming too close off the, uh, to the edges of the lane, but in terms of maneuverability I think the new Touareg, thanks to its all-wheel steering, is really very easy to handle. So now we've made our way out of the city and onto some nice country roads. So let's put the Touareg in its sport mode. So now the air suspension becomes a lot more rigid. The car lowers itself by a few centimeters. The steering becomes a lot more heavier. The gearbox, the eight-speed uh, automatic transmission holds the lower gear for a higher time so that it tries to keep the engine in the most powerful rev range so you get good throttle response. And let's see how it goes. Of course, this also has the anti-roll um, body stabilization system, which really helps keep the car level. This is a beautiful road, but there's a lot of bicyclists, so I might not be able to really push this car to the limit, but we'll see. Now, I've been driving a little bit earlier, and I can already tell you that this engine is not really my most favorite and I'll show you guys that in, in a bit but first let's talk about the handling Wow I think this 2,000 kilograms that this uh, car weighs is really well masked and hidden with this anti-roll system because it pushes the anti-roll bar on the inside wheel up and it pushes the anti-roll bar on the outside wheel down so it kind of you know tucks the car in leans it into the corner and it really helps when you're making a tight turn like this at a higher speed so that way I think the chassis is really nice and you can feel the stiffer suspension now with the uh, the air suspension setting in the sport mode the engine does not particularly sound very nice it's a bit grumbly and the truth is 
it has very bad low range. Even in the city, it was just lurching too much. There's a lot of turbo lag, and then it suddenly surges forward with, uh, in it, it's not a really linear power delivery. So let me try to demonstrate that. There is a car behind me, so I want to let him pass so that I can slow down and then um, do a little bit of a quick acceleration. There we go. All right. So I can show you right now. It's in first gear, in sport mode. Put my foot down, one, two, three, four, and now there's a surge. You know, I had to count to four. It was, there's a bit too much lag. Let's try that again. Let's slow it down. There's nobody behind me. Let's do zero to one, uh, zero to, let's say 50. Zero to 100 time, by the way, is 6.1 seconds. So foot down, one, two, three, four. And then the surge comes. I'm at 50 now. So I think this engine is not the most sporty to drive. It doesn't sound that nice either. And it really is a shame because this chassis is pretty good you know it's it's on the same platform as the Cayenne and the uh, the Audi Q7 so it's a pretty sporty chassis if it needs to be and thanks to all of the uh, advanced systems that it has and let's not forget the four wheel steering which at low speeds turns in the opposite direction as the front wheels but at higher speed turns in the same direction by a few uh, degrees as the front wheels so it gives you a very composed turning ability like this Wow, very beautiful landscape here. So, the Touareg, if you want this to be a sporty SUV, I think we should wait till we get the petrol three cylinder, three liter V6 engine. <laughs> Good body control. Or also probably wait uh, for the plug-in hybrid, which I think is a great option. And that's really the way forward and Volkswagen really realizes that. So in terms of sporty handling, it can do it, just needs a better engine. So unfortunately, we had to leave that beautiful winding country road in the mountains and now we're back on the motorway. So first things first, let's take the car out of sport mode and put it into comfort mode now. Let's see how that is. Immediately, the car feels a lot more softer. The suspension, the air suspension is a lot more supple. It's a lot more smoother now. It just has that magic carpet kind of floating ride. It's very nice. The uh, engine also shifts up a lot sooner so that the engine is barely taking over. The steering wheel also feels a little bit lighter, although it's still got a nice heft to it. And yeah. The important thing I want to talk about in this uh, highway is the, uh, the assistance systems that the new Touareg has. So we know the regular um, adaptive cruise control. So you set the speed that you want, the car maintains that speed like a cruise control, any cruise control would do, but with the ACC it measures the distance to the car in front and depending on the preset value that you have provided it will maintain that distance so it will brake if the car in front brakes it will speed up if the car in front moves away and you, you know all of that but what the Touareg does which again is not specific to the Touareg other cars have done this in the past of course but it reads the traffic signs so it reads the speed limits coming up and then it will adjust your cruise control speed to that so let's test it out. I'm gonna, the speed limit is now 130. I'm gonna set it to 130 and set the distance to the car in front to something that is fairly safe. And I'll let you know when there's a change in the speed limit and how this will automatically recognize that and it will adapt the speed automatically. This automatic uh, speed variation or speed uh, adapting technology does not work for the speed limiter. It's just for the ACC. But apart from that, I can already tell you it's very comfortable, it's very quiet. I can also turn on my seat massage just to make, that, uh, make this journey that much more comfortable. It's very quiet in here. The windows have extra acoustic uh, deadening. There's a lot of deadening and um, noise insulation everywhere. I mean, even look at this, there are two sun visors, so <laughs> there's so much of padding everywhere in the car. So it's very quiet, very refined. The engine that I did not really like so much, it, that grumbly sound is 
not that um, prominent now, of course, because it's in the eighth gear and it's just ticking over uh, at a very low RPM, so it's just uh, very quiet. The, the suspension, again, like I said, in this uh, comfort mode is so much more smoother than it is on the sport mode. It really is a lot more taut, a lot more stiffer in, that, uh, in the uh, sport mode. So I was driving this car earlier uh, for quite some time and I was able to get about 7 liters for 100 kilometers in terms of the um, efficiency. Right now it says 8.7, that's because we just got on the highway, but trust me, that's also something that I think is quite impressive about this engine. You know, it has its plus and minuses, its pros and cons, but the mileage is something that I think is pretty good. And if you really put it in eco mode, and then, you know, the, the car coasts, it does, uh, and the, the air conditioning also becomes a lot more economical, then I'm sure that you can see numbers even lower than seven, uh, which is for a 2000 kilogram, three liter V6 engine, I think it's pretty good. The assistance systems that I was talking about, well, apart from the adaptive cruise control, there's also lane keeping assist. So if I let my hands off the steering wheel in a very safe and controlled manner, you'll see that the car will steer itself back into lane, which is always useful in case you want to uh, open your bottle of water or you want to check for directions or get distracted a little bit, the car has your back. We're going around a very mild right-hand turn and you can see now that the steering wheel is turning itself. I get a little bit anxious, but uh, yeah, it does work. It does there, it's there just to help you out. It's not obviously trying to replace uh, a human driver. Apart from that, um, let's see. The speed control system also knows if there are bends coming up ahead on your navigation. So unfortunately I had the wrong navigation programmed, but because it knew that I was taking an exit, the adaptive cruise control was already slowing me down and it was saying, hey, there's a bend ahead, so you need to slow down. So it's really intelligent, it's really cool. And there's also blind spot monitoring, where cross traffic alert, front cross traffic alert, and um, yeah, a whole host of different things. So it says, for example, right now, 120 detected. So from 130, it's dropping the cruise control speed to 120. So overall, on the highway, I think the Touareg is in its zone. It's very, very happy to be here. It does a phenomenal job of making long distances seem like short distances. Very hushed, very relaxing with the air care, nice um, um, air conditioning, really good sound deadening, and um, all of these assistant systems. I think the Touareg is most happy and most at home on the highway. Let's summarize today's drive of the all-new third-generation Volkswagen Touareg. Prices start at around 61,000 euros, but with all the options, a well-spec Touareg is well over 85,000 euros, which is pretty expensive, but at the same time, it's still cheaper than its platform siblings. And now it comes with a whole host of the latest technology, like the intelligent adaptive cruise control, which will match the speed uh, with the speed limits on the traffic signs, by the way, that only works for the adaptive cruise control and not the speed limiter. But then again, you also have things like the thermal imaging, the matrix LED lights, which might not be new technologies, but in this segment for this car, I think it works really well. And let's not forget the driving dynamics have also improved thanks to the new air suspension system, the active anti-roll compensation, as well as rear axle steering. So overall, I think this is a very good package, a very good car, very refined, very quiet, very comfortable. The only problem that I have, and it's not a big problem, mind you, is this three liter V6 TDI engine. I think there's a little bit too much turbo lag for my taste, but uh, we'll have to see. Perhaps we can get our hands on the four liter V8 diesel or the plug-in hybrid, which I think will be the best bet. And then we can see if those are any better. But I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about this car? Let me know, put it down in the comments below. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here. I'll see you guys next time.